great artist from the West comes to an ancient civilization of the East. Finally, Fernando Botero, the most renowned living artist in Colombia, is exhibited in China. With his trademark chubby figures, whether of flowers, animals or people. It's a style that brings the color and spirit of Latin America across the globe. I have dreaming to come to China to exhibit my work for a long time. Now, finally, it's, it's a moment and I'm very, very happy. Thank you. At 83 years old, Botero is the world's most exhibited living artist, but his first appearance in China at the National Museum in Beijing raised his profile even more. Nor was the cultural significance lost on the country's leading officials. China's culture minister, Luo Shu Gang, and Colombia's ambassador to China, Carmenza Jaramillo, attended the opening ceremony. Chinese audiences warm to Botero's Latin American aesthetic and his unique personal language. This is your first official exhibition in China. Exactly, exactly, yes. So what took you so long, Master, to come to well, China? <laughs> Well, it's not that easy, you know. Some years ago, I mean, actually in 1982, I did a large exhibition of sculptures in Paris, in the Champs-Élysées, and the government wanted to bring the exhibition to China. But then there was some problem, I don't remember what was exactly, perhaps the budget or something, anyway, we didn't do it. But then it was, I have this desire to be able to come to China for many, many years, to be able to show my work here. And mm. finally, this, Desire. Finally, we were able to do it. Mm -hmm. We are very happy to be here. And so it's a great museum, and mm -hmm. it is great honor and great pleasure. You sometimes refer yourself as uh, the most Colombian artist of all Colombian artists. <laughs> what do we mean by that? Well, you know, what I mean is that in Colombia, most artists are actual, do abstractions. Then you, they didn't care about the reality of Colombia, like I did. You know, I have uh, something that is inspired directly in the country, and it speaks very clearly to the Colombians and to everybody that look at the painting. In that sense, because I worry about things in Colombia, violence in Colombia, poverty in Colombia, religion, all this, but then that's, in that sense I, I say that I'm the most Colombian and, and I, 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 I am amazed that they, everyone remember that first sentence that I did, that I say like that and all the time they say, why are you are the most Colombian of the Colombians? Mm -hmm. And Ambassador Jaramillo regards Botero as a national treasure in whom she takes great pride. This is a great opportunity to have the first uh, painter alive ex uh, making an exhibition in this museum. Um, Botero is the, the most important person we have in Colombia after uh, Maestro Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So for me, as a Colombian here, it's uh, an opportunity that we cannot compare. Maestro Botero is a, a big, uh, important representative of Colombia. So all the Colombians, we feel very proud to be with him today and see that he could realize his dream. 
The 96 works on display in Beijing were as varied as they are colorful, with themes ranging from bullfighting to the circus, recreation of classics, everyday life, still life and sketches. Well, in the studio we see some of the example paintings of your works, I guess. I mean, mm. these are only a tiny portion of your, your works. But no. let's talk about, let's start with this prominent feature mm -hmm. of all your works. <laughs> They're all big, right? Yeah. <laughs> in in mm. all different forms. Well, you know, there are different subject matters. I mean, the main subject matter in, in, in my paintings is the reality of Latin America. Then you see like a imaginary presence of, perhaps not of today, but of 50 or 60 years ago. Mm. Then I work also in the subject matter of the circus. Yeah. You see some of these uh, images yes. here. Yes. Then there was the bullfight that had been something that I treated as a painter very much because I love bullfights and it gives great opportunities in color and movement, etc. Mm. Then I did also about violence in Colombia, violence, uh, torture uh, in Abu Ghraib, uh, religion, well, many subjects. You know, I wanted to reflect life in, in every aspect, the, mm. happy, the happy subject matters and some more dramatic. Then, you know, you have to reflect life in general. Yes. This 1997 painting, entitled The Gardening Club, is one of Botero's signature pieces. Its soft colors depicting a scene of harmony and peace. But why does the master draw fat figures all the time? Well, actually, if you ask my father if he has ever painted a fat person, he will tell you he has never painted a fat person in his life. Because for him, it's not about fat at all. It's about volume. For him, the beauty and the sensuality of art lies in the exaltation of volume, like it happened in the Renaissance paintings. If you look at Renaissance paintings, the works of Mantegna, the works of Masaccio, the works of Michelangelo, they're very voluptuous, very sensual. At the end of the day, it's a the exaltation of volume. This is exactly what he looks for in his work. So it's not about fat or thin. He creates a universe of volume. If you look at his paintings, his fruits, his still lives, his landscapes, they all are, uh, are painted with the same language, and it's a language of volume. So it has nothing to do with fat. At the Beijing opening, Batero explained his style. It's, it's very difficult to describe, you know, you can say that it's figurative art because it's not abstract. Uh, that's, uh, that, 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 that is a style there that some people call botanism, I don't know, but anyway, it's figurative. That's the most exact description that, that I can give of, of my work. So this is pretty much from the aesthetic perspective. Exactly, you know, it's a, let's say true style you create in, in reality, that is a reality at the same time. Then you see, mm. uh, it looks exaggerated because, because my idea is, art is always exaggerated, my idea is about the importance of volume and color in, mm. in, in my subject matter. At the same time, being a figurative artist, I have to treat many aspects of life. Uh, but this, basically, there is an irreality because of my style. Mm. And his chubby figures were met with very positive reviews from Beijing audiences. It's an era when slim figures are considered beautiful, but the figures he has created are very chubby, very lovely. They are set in a fable-like atmosphere, creating a happy and pleasing mood. Oh, I think it's great. Uh, because uh, the artist, uh, contemporary artist, use a very funny way to uh, demonstrate his uh, view of the world and the world he lives in. And he use some uh, very warm and funny ways to uh, express uh, the, some, some uh, damage or some political things. Uh, a lot of contemporary artists will, will use some 
a very cold or very、uh, sad ways to demonstrate such kind of things. Latin America is a land of magic. I don't know if you have ever traveled to Latin America. The people there are plump, fleshy, and spirited. Cultures there are accumulating, colliding, and mixing up. For example, the Spanish culture, Indian culture, and cultures from the American continent itself. They all together form a magical culture that is both real and unreal. Botero is a representative of mixing these various cultures, which gave birth to his unique style. We have just had a very successful exhibition in Beijing, the National Museum of China, and、uh, which has attracted more than 200,000 visitors. We are very excited to travel this exhibition to Shanghai, the China Art Museum, and most especially, we have more works to be displayed. For example, like the nine、uh, monumental sculptures, and more like 30 more paintings, drawings. And three saints, which is the which are the latest work from Master Botero. We're very excited. This has been a lifelong dream of my father's to come to China and be able to show his work here, and finally it has become a reality. These are more than 100 paintings that cover different themes that he has worked on throughout 68 years of his professional life.、Uh, we will see many techniques that he has worked with, including oil paintings, drawings, sculpture. Pastels, watercolors,、uh, sanguines, charcoals, etc. So it is a very comprehensive view of the work of Fernando Botero, and I'm sure that the Chinese public will enjoy it. It was a huge success in Beijing, and we're very much looking forward to the success、uh, that it will have here in Shanghai. After Beijing, which ran from last November to this January, the master and his exhibition traveled to the China Art Museum of Shanghai, where visitors got a bonus. There were 30 additional paintings this time, and nine massive sculptures. These larger-than-life figures also exemplify Botero's aesthetics. They are, in the artist's own words, his ode to life. As he awaited the Shanghai opening, Botero looked forward to delighting art lovers from another metropolis and winning their hearts, just as he did in other Asian cities like Tokyo and Seoul. What is the、uh, cultural meaning of people in sizes like this? Well, let's say, yeah, I'm sure that from the point of view of culture, every place they choose different. You see, but you know, the 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 idea is the idea is that this thing that I'm doing should say something to every everybody in in the world. You know,、mm. it's, it's very important that this has a meaning here in China, like it has a meaning in Colombia. You know. You, you aspire, you, you desire to have universality in your work,、mm. you know. And then I will say that I did、uh, exhibitions in countries of the East. For instance, I did an exhibition in in in, in Korea、mm. that had two hundred thousand visitors. Then it was a great success. At the same time, I have shown in every capital of Europe, and then the reaction. Has been always very positive.、Mm. Then this is interesting for the artist, you know, to do something that is Colombian with this personal style, a personal style, and this has a meaning to somebody in Singapore, 
Korea, China. I hope that the people in China will have a positive reaction to my work. Mm. Because that's what is important, you know, to, to touch the heart of, of everyone in the world through the honesty of a place. Mm. You know, you have to be, to have, have a subject matter that is local and this touch the mind of everybody, like Chinese art. Chinese art is, is loved and admired all over the world. And it's so Chinese, you know, you see all these beautiful watercolors and scenes, and the scenes of the villages and the, 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 the fantastic landscapes. And these, these people love this work, they are inspired by this work, mm. and it's Chinese, completely Chinese, you know. In my case, I am completely Colombian or Latin American, and I have the same aspiration that my work will say something to the Chinese people and the way that they did to the Koreans, etc. Mm. This, well, uh, this is the important thing. Well, this goes back actually to your own message. You also mentioned it just now. The subjects are local, but the message, the uh, language, is universal. Exactly. Can you tell us more about this universal language of your, of your works? Well, you know, there is some some rules about if when you are an artist. There are some rules. You know, you have to know about drawing. You have to know composition, color, subject matter, etc. You have to you worry about all these things and do it right, because you know a painting is composed of all these elements and everything has to be done right, because this is what touched the, the mind of people, is the, the balance, the equilibrium, the harmony of the things. You know, then when everything is right, then people are touched, even if you're Chinese, Colombian, whatever, you know, because there is something, an equilibrium, an harmony that is, that, that is very important, is the base of art. Sharing the richness of, uh, of Master Botero's art with China is the, the greatest project that one can ever direct. So we are very, very excited to have uh, this exhibition in the China Art Museum and we look forward to have every Chinese that comes to Shanghai to come and feel the sculptures of Master Botero, to touch them to take pictures with them, to enjoy them, because just as Master Botero says, every brush stroke that, that he does, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like a corroding. So we invite China to corrode and to enjoy uh, Master Botero's art. This animated short film, made by his hometown fellows, tells the story of how Botero grew from a talented youngster to a renowned art master. Botero was born in Medellin, which used to be a small town in Colombia. His mother, a seamstress, was a sensitive woman with exquisite taste. His father, a salesman, died when he was four. Botero developed a very strong interest in drawing in childhood, but recognition began to extend beyond the circle of his classmates with an early watercolor of a matador. From the age of 16, he was featured in exhibitions and began to do illustrations for magazines. To be born in a place like that with strong traditions, how has that influenced your artistic creation? Well, it, not, it was not, uh, when I was a young man, there was no museums and no, not much information about art at that time. I always think it's, it's very strange that I developed such a strong vocation for art in a place that in which there was no, not, nothing to dream about, you know, let's say there was no possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the artists were always very poor. Uh, well, uh, everyone, when I told my, my mother that I wanted to be an artist, first thing that she told me is, well, you are going to die of hunger. Said, okay, <laughs> but I love, I love art, that's what I want to do. And I said, okay, wonderful. If you, want, if you feel that you are an artist, be an artist. Uh, but you know, it was, not, uh, not, it was not easy in the beginning, not easy at all. To, to be an artist in Colombia, to, to, 
to, to be able to make a little living very poor, it was difficult. But anyway, it was such a pleasure to be an artist, to do art. With money he earned from prizes and selling works, Batero went to Europe, to cities like Madrid, Paris and Florence, to learn from the masterpieces in museums. He would imitate them while adding a personal twist of his own. He was heavily influenced by Renaissance artists, who created the illusion of volume in the figures they painted. Your recreation of the masterpieces and the history of art. How did this start? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, I have a great admiration for the old masters. I did this version for admiration. First of all, admiration. Second, for the desire of learning something doing this. Because, you know, when you look at the painting and when you repaint the paint or you copy, actually, it's not, not the word, it's not copy, but when you get inspired by the painting, then you have to look deeper into the painting. And then, especially that through a strong style, you can take possession of the subject matter of another artist and make an original work of art. This version that is in the exhibition that are actually original because they are so different, so, so uh, radical in the style, so clear that they become boteros, you know. Even if I take the subject from Velázquez or another uh, great artist, I, through the style, to, to believe, then becomes a botero. You see, and this is important, to prove that in art the most important thing is style. This is the most difficult and the most difficult thing to get. Because you know, not everybody has the privilege to arrive to, to express something in a totally different way. Mm. You know, because it's something that you have to born with that, to be able to do it, you know. Uh, and that's why this version is very important, that you prove something and you learn something at the same time. But his own signature style of exaggerated volume began in earnest at the age of 24 on Still Life with Mandolin. From then on, the artist was unleashed, creating a prolific body of work. At 29 years old, his work Mona Lisa, age 12, was exhibited at MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, starting his trajectory to international prominence. Talent and diligence have since combined to forge a glittering career for the artist, making him highly visible from Park Avenue in New York City to the Champs-Élysées of Paris. Back home, Batero has a plaza named after him, and even a metro train, its interior adorned with the master's images. Bullfighting. This is a major category in your exhibition too. We have uh, one bullfighter over there. This is because when you were young, you wanted to be a bullfighter yourself. Family influence. Well, well, well it was a little thing of a uh, few weeks that I went to, <laughs> All right. to a school. A little hobby. <laughs> it was a little hobby when I was 14 years old. No, no. Okay. But you know, no, the subject matter is very important because there is a lot of color, movement, uh, poetry, drama, isn't it? And, and it's something that if you have this passion for, like I do for the bullfight, really it pays itself because it's, it's so, it comes so natural to me to, to do bullfight. Okay. Then it's, it's, and then so many, it's a good tradition because you know, of course, there are Goya who did masterpieces. Then there was, uh, of course, uh, Manet also did great paintings of bullfight, Picasso, even Bacon did some paintings of, of bullfight. You know, it's something that is. Uh, it's, it's full of possibilities, full of mm. possibilities. The color, uh, even the ring, is, uh, there is no the line of the horizon, horizon. you know, there is, uh, the, the ring also creates a color space that is, uh, and the background, the public, and this and that. It's a lot of possibilities for analysis. 
So the ring is like a stage where you can see everything, yeah, every aspect of life happening on that stage. Yeah, and a lot of drama also. Let's move on to this next category, which is so much less ambiguous. <laughs> this is about circus. Circus. Yeah. So where did you get that? In, in Mexico? No, you know, actually, in all Latin America, when I was a child in, in Colombia, the, the, the circus came every year to Medellin. Uh, another fiesta. Another fiesta, another fiesta. We have the vocation of fiesta. You know, it was uh, a tradition, a tradition. In China has been China very theory. strong. Mm. Acrobatics. See. But, you know, this is the good thing about the, the circus, that is a universal thing. And everybody in the, in the world loved the circus because they were there when they were a child. Then they have these souvenirs of, of, of wonder when they were ch children. This and that. Then in the soldier matter is already People love this of the matter already. And then the, the attitude of the human body in the circus, you only see it in the circus because the contortionists, the, the trapezes, the this and that, you only see it in the circus. You know, and that is important. It gives you a freedom of movements and positions and things that no, no other subject, no other activity gives. Mm. Then that's why it's important. And then there is the poetry of the life in the background of the circus. You know, we, we, Sofia and I were in Mexico in a small town. Suddenly came a little circle, very poor. Then we went to the spectacle. Then we went to the back to talk to the people, see the way they live with these uh, animals that were very hungry. And this and that, you know, it, well, there was a poetry in this gypsy kind of life uh, because they are always in, in the movement, nomads. You know, then they have a special mentality to, mm. to, to be part of the circus. Creating art is Botero's greatest joy of life. As this video shows, the master in action humming tunes as he creates a mural for a church. More than merely painting or sculpting art, Botero breathes it. I think it's a result of his hard work and his dedication to his, to his uh, profession. Uh, I've never met another man who rejoices so much in doing what he does as my grandfather. He loves to paint, he loves to draw, he loves to his art. And uh, that is the result of his passion and his commitment to his work. I have great admiration for him as an artist. He's an extraordinary uh, artist that has uh, created his own language and his own style and has had tremendous success all over the world. And uh, as a father, he is exceptional. He's a great human being and a great father. So having a successful career like yours, spanning decades, uh, looking back, what is most rewarding to you as a painter? Well, the most rewarding for me is the pleasure that I had when I am in my studio painting. This is the reason of my existence and the base of my joy of life, the reason of my living, is this, the act of painting, you know. It's so, such an extra, such a pleasure to be in front of the canvas that doesn't everything disappear. You know, it's only the canvas that is in front of you and you forget that you are standing for hours, you, you, you don't exist, it exists only the painting. This ecstasy that you feel for seven or eight hours a day, there is no price for, for, for that, it's fantastic. I'm so sorry nobody, nobody paints like that, not, not everybody is a painter. I don't understand how they can live <laughs> without being painters, you know, it's such a pleasure. Let's say it's a different style. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank exactly you. Different. Thank you, Master, for your time and thank for you so sharing much. your insights and your story. Thank you so much. Thank you.